What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode of the first person shooter tutorial series, we are going to be going over different projectile speeds. So when we shoot our bullet right now from our gun, it has a standard projectile speed that we set up in the series, and basically this is just the default that is on the projectile movement component. However, we may want to be able to change this per weapon. So for example, this weapon may shoot at this rate, but if I pick up a different weapon, let's say the SMG, or what I call the bruiser here, it may shoot at this rate. Now this might be hard to tell the difference right now, but if I actually go into my weapon, I can change this parameter now, which will allow us to see the difference. So right now my projectile speed by default is 5,000. If I go ahead and make it like 500, 10 times slower, we should see a very big change here. So you can see how much slower this projectile is. I can keep up with it if I'm walking with it. Now likely you don't want it that slow unless it's a rocket or something similar, but you can really set this to be whatever speed you want. So you can change the projectile speed from the weapon. You could also change this by ammo type if you wanted to, but I think doing it by weapon is typically the standard method since you could use the same ammo type in different weapons, but the weapons may fire them at different speeds, just like in real life. Now, before we hop into this episode, if you want to get caught up in this series and check out how we've done everything from the interactions to the enemy health and so on and so forth, feel free to click this link in the top right corner right here. That is the entire playlist of the first person shooter tutorial series. Alternatively, if you don't care about that, but you just care about the individual weapons and their components, such as their damage and their projectile speed, I recommend checking out this episode right here before checking out this one. This is where we configure the damage for each weapon, and we're going to use a similar method for today's episode, so you'll be able to get a good handle on how to modify certain things for individual weapons. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. So this is a code and blueprint tutorial series. We're going to start in the code and we're going to do most of our logic in the code today. So I'm going to go to my Visual Studio and I'm going to go to my base weapon.h class. This is my standard weapon, my wrapper class for all my weapons. I'm going to scroll down to my variables and I'm going to make a new variable called float projectile speed. And as the comment says, this is the base projectile speed when fired from this weapon. I say base because you may get modifiers or be able to upgrade your weapon and that could change this value, but this is the default value that we want to use. I made the variable AU property that is edit anywhere in blueprint read write. That way we can access it and change it in the blueprint. And then I gave it a category of weapon just to organize it. Again, that is float projectile speed. Now in the base weapon.cpp, if we go to our constructor, which is that first function where we set all the default values, we want to set a default value for the projectile speed. Remember that this can be different for all weapons. And so it doesn't really matter what you put in here unless you plan to use this as the default value for certain weapons. So for me, I did make it 5,000 because I knew I wanted my blaster to use that speed, but otherwise it genuinely doesn't matter. You can set this to whatever value you want. So those are my default values, very simple. And now let's go into the editor and let's go to each of our weapons. So I have them in here. I have my base weapon, my assault rifle BP and my submachine gun BP. So let's start with the base weapon. This is my blaster. And if I click on the class defaults when I'm in here, I can see all of my parameters that are accessible in the blueprints. And I have my projectile speed parameter right here. So you saw me do this earlier, but now you can customize this value for each of your weapons. For the base weapon BP, I have 5,000, which happens to be what I put in the constructor, but it could be different. Then the assault rifle is this weapon right here, and it is a hit scan weapon. So I don't actually need a projectile speed in here because it doesn't spawn a projectile. It just triggers a ray trace. So when I come in here, pick up my weapon, it triggers a ray trace and determines if it hits immediately. So I don't spawn a projectile. And since I don't spawn a projectile, I don't need projectile speed. And I've set it to zero just to kind of make that apparent. In case anyone else comes in here and looks at this file, they can say, oh, projectile speed is zero. It's not spawning a projectile. You can also tell this because the fire type says hit scan, but I think it's safer just to set it to zero for any hit scan weapons. That way there's no confusion. Lastly, we have our submachine gun, which is this weapon right here. 
and I'm going to go to class defaults and I'm going to set my projectile speed. Now I've set 3,500 because that felt like a good value, but of course use the value that you are comfortable with. Once you've done that, you can go back to your base weapon BP and let's go into the spawn projectile at crosshairs function. So we call this function from the fire weapon event. We have projectile and hit scan. The projectile calls the spawn projectile at crosshairs function. The hit scan calls a different function, create ray trace, which we don't need to edit for today's episode. So spawn projectile crosshairs either uses the aim down sights camera or the regular first person camera and spawns the projectile at where the player or character is aiming based on those values. When we come into this function, we are getting the location, the direction that they're looking to make the proper transform to create the ammo. And based on the weapon type, we're spawning different types of ammo. So my weapon types I currently have are assault rifle, pistol, and submachine gun, and I spawn the corresponding ammo. Technically, I have two as assault rifle because I use that ammo type. I didn't have another ammo type for the pistol, so don't be confused. Nothing tricky is going on there. I just have two assault rifle and one submachine gun ammo BP. Essentially, I have different types of ammo for the weapon that we're spawning. I have base ammo BP, assault rifle ammo BP, and submachine gun ammo BP. And those are the classes that we're spawning in this function. In here, I want to set the speed of this ammo when it is created based on the projectile speed from the weapon. So to do this, we need to go into our ammo files and specifically the base ammo BP. In here, there was only this logic previously, which was collision logic, and it was used to determine if we hit a regular spot on the enemy or a weak point such as a headshot. Now I'm adding the begin play event, and I'm going to fill it out to do some basic logic, which sets the velocity of this actor as soon as it is created. So up to this point in the series, the begin play event of the basic ammo type, which is the base ammo BP, did not have the begin play event filled out. So you can type event begin play to get it if you don't already have it. And in here, we are going to set the velocity that we should have on the projectile movement component because previously we were just using the standard velocity on this component. I'm going to override this method a little bit and just set the velocity directly to the value that we want. There will be a lot more that we do with this in the future because we can do things such as making the weapon shoot projectiles that have drop off over time and a few other things related to the actual ammo and bullet path so don't worry too much about all this stuff right now just know that we're going to override the default method that we're using on the projectile movement component with a custom system to shoot this projectile at the right speed what we need to do is figure out what direction the speed should be applied in that's our velocity if we know the direction that the speed is being applied in we have our velocity that we can set on the projectile movement component and to get the direction, we want to know where the weapon is facing. The weapon is the parent of the ammo. You can actually see this in the base weapon BP. The owner is self, and self is the base weapon BP. So the weapon that spawns this ammo is the owner. The direction that the weapon is facing is the direction we want to apply the forces on the ammo. Because when it comes out of the weapon, it's going to have all that force from where the gun was aiming. So we can do get owner and we want to get the actor right vector. The reason for this get actor right vector is because this will return the actual direction it is facing in the world space. This is important because the weapon gets attached to the character, and so we're not just trying to figure out where the character is rotated, but where the weapon is actually rotated, and that could be a little bit different based on the way the skeleton is, where they're grabbing the weapon, and things like that. So we're going to use get actor right vector. Then we want to multiply the vector or the direction that we have here. And if you're in Unreal 4, you're going to do multiply times float or vector times float. And you'll get this node here. If you're in Unreal 5, then you're going to just do multiply and you'll get this vector times vector node. Then you can pass a float into it. So what I've done is I've made a speed parameter on the base ammo BP and I have passed this in. Now this speed parameter is just the float and it is on the base ammo BP, but I'm actually going to make a quick fix here and I'm going to move this to the code class. So I'm going to go back into the code and I'm going to go to my base ammo.h file 
and I'm going to make a new variable in here. The launch speed of the projectile. You can actually say the movement speed. This is the general movement speed of the projectile. And we can make this U property edit anywhere. So we can edit it in the blueprint. We're going to make a blueprint rewrite. And so we can organize it. We're going to give it a category of ammo. Then we're going to call it float speed. In base ammo.cpp, we can go into our constructor and we can say set the default values for variables. And we're going to set speed to be, and you can set it to an initial value if you want. For this one, since I could use any number of speeds from the weapon, I'm going to set it to something really small, like 1.0. Could set it to zero if you want to make it completely neutral. And I am going to go in here and I'm going to delete this blueprint speed that I have because if I leave it in there, it'll get confused because there are two variables and it'll actually give me an error. So I'm going to delete the speed variable here. And I'm going to delete this stuff that we added. And now I have this for my begin play, these three nodes. I'm going to relaunch the editor so that I can access that speed variable that we just created. Just give me one second. I'll be right back. The editor is back open. And now I'm going to go back to my base ammo PP. What I want to do in my begin play event here where I have these three nodes. Now, if I go to search for speed, I'm actually not going to be able to grab this because my file, my base ammo VP is actually not a child of the base ammo class, which is just something I have overlooked this point in the series and we didn't really ever need it. So it didn't come into play, but now we're going to start needing it. So I'm going to go to my class settings. I'm going to change my parent class to be base ammo. And now we have base ammo as our parent type. And now if we search for speed, we should find it and we can. We want to get that speed and we want to pass that into the vector. It will say promote vector to float single precision. And that is exactly what you want to get vector times float in Unreal Engine 5. Once I'm done with this stuff right here, what is left is to set the actual velocity on the projectile movement to this result. So we want to grab our projectile movement and we want to say set velocity. The one I'm looking for is the regular set velocity under velocity. We're just going to override it and use the standard velocity node here. And we're going to bring our line into that. And then we are going to take the result of the vector times float and pass that into the velocity. And then you will have what I have here. So that is setting the actual velocity on this projectile. But we need to set this speed variable to the one coming from the weapon since the weapon is what's launching this ammo. Now, if we go to our base weapon BP, we could set it after this. So we could literally drag off of these and say set speed. And this would work. We could use this and set it to the projectile speed of the weapon. What would be best is to have the speed variable filled out immediately upon spawning the actor so that it starts with the correct data initially. And to do this, we can make the variable, the speed variable instance editable. And now since this is a code variable, we need to go back into the code and we need to go to the base ammo.h. We're going to scroll down to our U property and we can do it after the category or before. It doesn't matter. Let's do it after. Let's say meta equals expose on spawn equals true. And now we can relaunch this. Make sure that you have your end parenthesis, which I almost forgot. So meta equals parentheses expose on spawn equals true. And now we can launch this again, and we will have that expose on spawn parameter that you typically see set on blueprint variables, but it will work for the variable that we made in code, the speed variable. The editor is open one more time. So now we can go into our base ammo BP and everything looks good in here. Let's go into the base weapon BP and you'll see that our spawn actor nodes now have this speed parameter with the default value. We want to take our projectile speed variable on the weapon. So get projectile speed and we want to pass this into the speed on all the spawn actors for the ammo types. Now, after doing that, you can launch your game and this should work. You should see that the speed is working. 
but a really good way to test it is to change your value. You can make it something like 1000, right? Slow it down quite a bit. And you can see how much slower it is. I can actually track it. It's a little bit faster than my walking speed. I can probably run and catch up to it. And we can. So you can see that the speed that we select in the class defaults for the weapon is being updated to actually change the projectile speed. I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my Patreon and YouTube membership subscribers and supporters. You guys have made these series possible. Continuing to believe in these tutorials is so amazing. I am so incredibly grateful for you guys, so thank you so much. If you're interested in supporting the channel and seeing the benefits that you could get out of doing so, feel free to click this link in the top right corner right here. And also, I want to let you guys know about the merch shop that just opened. You might see some content below your video, some merch. That is official merch from us. It's the first time we got access to doing this. I'm so excited to roll it out for you guys. And any things you purchase also support the channel. So really, I thank you for everything. And for those who have already bought merch, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Anyway, guys, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.